And hello there. Welcome to another episode of Rebooting Business. I'm your wonderful host, David Summerfleck, and my special guest today is Joe, Joe DiChiara. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Joe is an entrepreneur with a CPA a license and has worked with thousands of business owners over a 35 year career providing simple bookkeeping through complex IRS tax audits. I don't know if there's such a thing as a wonderful or happy IRS audit or a simple audit. Um, it troubled Joe that most new businesses fail and he was determined to find out why. So Joe learned that Joe learned that success starts with mindset, a subject they don't teach you in CPA school. And he learned that this was the true culprit on top of an overly complex system, making it nearly impossible to succeed in business. So Joe's primary purpose is to teach the fundamental principles of success combined with the practical knowledge acquired as a CPA. By providing business coaching combined with affordable accounting and tax services, Joe is helping stem the tide of new business failures. Thank you for joining Rebooting Business with me, Joe. We're in a post-COVID-19 world now, and good Lord. I mean, let's first talk about your background and experience related to being a CPA and helping small, small business owners, then kind of circle back and get into the most common mistakes and issues you see and how this kind of is magnified you know, with what's going on today. Yeah. Thank you for uh, asking me to be on. Actually, I think I asked you if I could be on, but either way, this is, this is where we wound up. You're, and, a, you're a fellow New Yorker, just like me. So yes. I'm from, I was from way upstate in Buffalo, which they don't really consider New York. No, At least. No, that, that's, <laughs> that's big time New York. Listen, yeah. If you could survive a, a winter in Buffalo, you you got all you have all my respect. Yeah, that was like Russia. And I remember we used to go into when I was a kid, we used to go into Joy Z and look for trouble and you would learn to run, you know, very quickly in Joy Z. But yeah. uh, anyway, what's uh, let's get into your background and experience related to being so, a CPA. You know, my background really starts uh, with Jerry Lewis. The I don't know if you remember the muscular dystrophy. How telegram. could I forget? And I look forward to that every year because for some reason I found so much joy when my mom would let me call up. And I actually thought I was going to get Jerry on the phone. Uh, he was my favorite comedian. Uh, and I just got so much joy out of donating a dollar to these kids that I, I felt like I, I thought I was making a difference. And so fast forward that to when I was 10 years old, I started a casino in my driveway. Uh, that was a long story, but I decided that. that you, <laughs> you ever know, see Goodfellas, Joe? Yes. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of is starting a casino in your driveway as a kid. Sounds like the beginning of Goodfellas. Well, it could have been, but my parents <laughs> shut me down after yeah. one successful night. But the seed was planted, right. David. The seed was planted a couple in a couple of ways. Number one, I said, why do people get jobs when they could just make money mm -hmm. having a casino? I mean, who, who's who's better than that? You know, why do people go get up in the morning anyway? And yeah. I thought that. If I can make so much money, I could donate it to Jerry's kids and whoever else I wanted to. So I always wanted to help people, and I always wanted to be in business. I became a CPA because my father had tricked me when I was 17, uh, seeing that I was I was hanging out with the, the good fellow guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, CPAs run businesses. And other business owners go to them for advice. That's right. I was like, well, then I'm going to be a CPA. Nobody told me that that meant I was going to be an accountant. To me, being a CPA was being the business advisor. I could start and run businesses. Uh, and, and I did. But I didn't know that my career was going to be spent as an accountant. And for a long time, I resented my father for tricking me. 
besides the fact that, you know, I, I did have a successful career, uh, I got to work with thousands of business owners, but I just felt like a fish out of water, Dave. You know, I felt like I was confined because it wasn't really what I signed up for. When I was 10, I thought I was going to own all these businesses, be, you know, rich beyond belief and, and able to help people. But what happened was uh, I saw a lot of pain and yeah. suffering uh, through my clients' businesses. And it was just, it was a lot harder than what I envisioned. Yeah. You know, and I never lost hold of that dream when I was, you know, 10 years old saying I could do anything I want because if you could start a business and a business has no limits. So, I started uh, some self-reflection, uh, some, uh, what would you call it, soul searching mm, yeah. to, to figure out, is this really what I wanted to be when I grow up? And I came across a couple of publications, uh, The Science of Getting Rich and, and Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And it turned my, my philosophy on what I thought I knew about business right side up. Because it turns out that I had everything backwards. Yeah, very, very true. I mean, I, I, w I think I told you I was a, a mentor for an organization called SCORE off and on for about 10 years, which is a division of the U.S. Small Business Administration. And I would, I would advise small business owners on how to properly use digital marketing to attract more leads. The overwhelming majority of them had no websites, or if they did, they were very poor, there was no content, there was no way for them to increase visibility or reduce overhead using what they had. And they were just completely new to the concepts, but all the good intentions, like that old saying, the road to hell is paved with good intention. You try to help them, but invariably you would find that it was more about doing therapy in mediation than it was about really helping the business because they would and they would hire other family members with no experience to work in a new industry to them. They may or may not even want to be there. They may or may not know what they're doing and they're budgeting for things that they they're spending money on the wrong things and refusing to invest in the right things. And I'm sure you experienced that probably many, many times. And you, you just explain what I went through and you yeah. know how frustrating it is because you want to help these people. And, you know, so I found out that I was doing it backwards. I was doing it based on my scientific accounting ability, trying to measure revenue and expenses and, and cash flow, not realizing that those were really just results of what happened before. Yeah. I was a bean counter. I was saying, what did you do before? But I was more interested in how did you get here and don't you want to be somewhere else? And so these publications pointed out the fact that people, they get sucked into a black hole, David. That's what I call it, the business black hole, because we get engulfed in complexities and details and you wind up the business owner has no idea what the hell he's doing he doesn't have a website doesn't know marketing from a hole in the wall mm -hmm. and now you now you're trying to explain it to him and he's got to pay his nephew that he hired <laughs> that screwed up his website mm -hmm. and it's i was like this is why people fail not because of what they're saying, you know, lack of capital, lack, you know, too much competition. That's for the, the established businesses. But a small business owner gets swept up into this black hole and it's almost impossible for them to succeed on their own. How do you, how do you reboot businesses, most of which are on a collision course with failure? Statistically speaking, and this is pre-COVID-19, you've heard all the statistics, you know, 99% of most small businesses will go under within 16 months, give or take a few months. 
And I think the, the breakaway point was five years, that if they make it to five years or longer, the odds increase dramatically that they would succeed. Now, those numbers are definitely skewed now. So before COVID-19, what would you tell them and what would you say now, knowing what you know? First off, let me tell you, I love what you call this, the, the business reboot. Yeah. Because people are talking about pivoting. No, it's more of a reboot. It's like, turn off the power, let's start from scratch. You have to. And my, my approach is the same today as it was three months ago. Because I start with the beginner. I do my business intentionally now. And that's what those publications taught me. People get into business, they think they're going to make money. They think it's going to be easy mm -hmm. and they get swept up. So what I tell people is, number one, I have principles that I follow. If you look at successful people from Napoleon Hill to Abraham Lincoln to anybody, they didn't focus on the details. They focused on the big picture. What, why am I here? You know, Lincoln believed that slavery was bad. Forget about all the other details, what it's going to do here. The, the bottom line was he believed that it was wrong. And that was his job as being elected was to end it. Uh, Thomas Edison wanted a freaking light bulb. He didn't care what it took. <laughs> okay. Uh, Henry Ford wanted to blanket the, the country with horseless carriages. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs wanted to make the computer cool for people. You know, those people that have the why, those are the successful people. Yeah, I agree totally. My, my why became, I found out, to help people avoid all that unnecessary pain and suffering. Yeah, I call it drama. You know, like that saying, save the drama for your mama. I agree a, a hundred percent. I used to get so many phone calls from people who would just call me up and say, well, how much is a website? How much is SEO? How much is e-commerce? And I'm, sometimes I would respond and say, well, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> what are you trying to weave? What do you have a problem you're trying to solve? I just need a website immediately. How much? How much? Well, go to Wix and get a free DIY template. Will you get more leads from that? That's the question. And then what kind of leads will you get from that? Because you're not acting from an organized, deliberate perspective. You're throwing rice at the wall and hoping some of it will stick. You know, and that's why I wrote The Road to Digital Marketing Profits behind me, because I wanted to try to address that. It was getting to be so common. And I would hear it from other people in digital marketing and web design and SEO. How do, what, what do I do? So I just thought, well, I'll write a book on it and it'll be a workbook. But it's exactly what you're saying though. Knowing the why, instead of trying to figure out the how, you know, you need a microphone so I can do a podcast interview with you. Okay. Now I need, now I know the why. So now I can look online for the best type of one that won't break after a couple of days. Could I get one that's $5? Sure. But I don't have, I don't want to have to buy the same thing over and over again every week. And that's what these business owners are doing. You know, before COVID-19 came, I remember I would drive down the main street in the city where we live and you would see all these mom and pop restaurants. None of them were online. None of them would deliver. None of them had decent websites. You couldn't possibly see what they have on their menu. Where do you think they are now? Gone. You know, and you might like the business, but unless I'm willing to walk in there and, and place my order and physically go in there and pick it up in a busy uh, waiting area or dining area, you can't get it. They're not equipped to bring it to your door. They're not equipped for you to place orders online. Every pub, every business, every restaurant, everything. Psychologists should be talking to people online. Most of them aren't.
I guarantee it. You know, it's just on the one hand, it's annoying, but then on the other hand, it's very concerning. What do we do? What do we do, Joe? Throw them out the window. What do we do? It's like trying to figure out who killed John F. Kennedy. You know, you could spend all yeah. your whole life, try, and then if you find the answer, what difference does it make? You know, the yeah. bottom line is we are where we are, and that's why I said your reboot thing. I think that this, you know, people might think that they're going to say, oh, he's off his rocker, but this could have been the best thing that happened to a lot of people. Because it's forcing them to, to relook at what the heck they're doing, why they're doing it, and then if they're going to survive, if they're a real entrepreneur, they're going to survive this because that's what we do. We don't fail, okay? Well, actually, we fail often. We're not failures because right. we pick up the pieces and we, and we learn from it. And and right now, the way of doing business before is gonna it's it it'll never be the same. It's, Everything it won't work. has been so. Everybody has to reboot, go back to what was your original intention. So my intention was always to help the new or you know struggling solopreneur conquer these kinds of issues. So for me, my business is, is off the charts right now. Yeah. And I'm not embarrassed to say that. I see a lot of other people's businesses are off the charts. Uh, and I see people that have been affected. Uh, what, what would be like a mortal wound to their business. But they're rebooting, David. And they're coming up with ideas and when the door is open again, people are going to be hungry to spend money again. And this is a t this is a great time to reboot your business, maybe even start a new business. You know, there's like almost 15% unemployment now. People aren't going to be too, you know, secure in jobs anymore. And maybe that they can think about starting a business. And, and with today's technology, you know, all you need is a computer. You don't even need a computer. You can make money on a phone. So yeah, yeah, that's very true. You could just take your phone and do so much. You could scale. You could scale as you make more. You invest more back into infrastructure, and that's how Amazon grew to where it is now, where it's practically indispensable. I mean, between you know everything that we eat, we have delivered to the front door. I don't want to get COVID-19. Why would I go to a restaurant and place an order and you intellectually, you know, most of the people are not going to be wearing N95 masks. So why would you do it? Um, I'd love, to, at what point, if you're a business owner today, you should know your customer acquisition costs, your churn rate, what your ROI range is, to what extent should they be aware of those measured with, like what you said, knowing your moral and ethical, but also your long-term goals? You know, the accounting... How do you is, balance that? You, you need to, you know, accounting is a science. And you need to be able to look at your numbers because again, you know, Tony Robbins said, all you got to do if you want to be successful, find somebody that's successful in, in what you want to be successful in and see what the heck they're doing. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's and, not that complicated. It's simple. In, in it's marketing, we easy. call that piggybacking. Yeah. And so you, what do successful businesses do? They know their metrics. They know how much time and effort it takes and what it costs to get a customer. But we're talking about micro businesses, David. And yeah. first you got to decide who is my best customer. And I don't think most businesses even get there. No, they if just you say, let me get customers. Yeah. If you ask most 
small businesses, they would say your ideal customers, anybody who has money. But the irony is that most small business owners are not in a position where they can be Walmart. Walmart tries to please everyone and serve everyone on the basis of having the cheapest possible prices, not the highest quality. So you don't go to Walmart thinking I'm going to get the greatest stuff in the world. You're going there because I need cheap. I need to survive. And if you're a small business owner, you can't always offer the cheapest possible prices for everything you do. And you can't reach everyone. So they have to really, really be thinking about how do you adapt. But like what you said, more importantly, who is your ideal consumer? Why? Where do they live? Where where do they congregate online? What groups are they members of? How can you reach them and connect with them? Whether it means developing a podcast. You know, if you're someone who has an age, uh, if you're somebody who has an accounting business, let's use, use you as an example. If you're someone who has an accounting uh, uh, service, you know, it could be having a podcast about accounting, you know, Go sexy accounting or something. I don't know, but but something to speak to that ideal consumer base, right? And, you know, you know, tr in, a, in an effort to keep things simple, because that's that's what I do. I try to make it as simple as possible for people. When you're talking, you know, I understand metrics and and ROI and stuff, but most people their heads will start spinning. Yeah. So I say, let's look at the facts. Who are your customers? How many do you have? Let's look at them. Who are the best ones? Yeah. Okay. Where did they come from? That's where you should be focusing your efforts. Right. So do they my know? Best, my best customers come from referrals always because of the nature of accounting. You know, it's like showing a stranger your underwear drawer. You know, you got to know, like, and trust the person. And then if you, you know, then you're, you're friends with, with me, but we know the same people. So I looked at my best customers. I said, 95% of my customers come from other people. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? Now I focus on referral sources, people like you. You may not become my client, but you'll know what I do, and you'll have no problem referring your uncle or somebody to me. Right. So look at your results. You don't need uh, a CPA license to, to look at the results and say, where, where did I win and where am I losing? And you, you do it like that. As you start getting bigger and you learn how to know your numbers, then you bring in somebody like you that understands things like, uh, you know, McDonald's, I'll use this example. They know. If they do a, a, a promotion, you know, come drive up here and we'll give you a free hamburger. Mm -hmm. They'll know how much revenue that's going to produce for each store. I mean, it's they got it down to a science. A oh, absolutely. Science. They beta yeah. test but, everything. Everything is recorded and triply. They know they're they know what the return on investment is before they put any commercial out any advertisement they manage their social media brilliantly as you would expect but now i don't have you don't have their budget but we can right. approach it the same way absolutely you have to look say listen how much time did, it took me six months to cultivate this customer i took him out to dinner and how much is my time worth? I can't spend six months cultivating a customer. It's it's not it's not a good business model for me. Right. Whatever return on investment you might make, it would would not be sustainable that way. You know, if you if I have to take you out for five lunches, uh, for example, and you're still undecided, that's just ridiculous. There's something wrong with that picture. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's just not a way to do it. It has to be organized, deliberate, um, 
running like what what I call top down management, everything uh, adhering to the lean management principles. So you basically have like a machine that's operating on all cylinders, but you can't get there without knowing the basics as as you articulated. So. Given what we're going through with COVID-19, with the unemployment rates rising to, I don't think we're at the peak of what we experienced during the peak of the Great Depression. I don't think we're there yet. I think we still have five or 10 more percentage points. I'm not sure. But given what's going on right now as of, what is it, May 8th, 2020, where do you think we're headed and what do you think businesses could can do? while they, you know, to, to keep their head above water and try to ultimately flourish. And we'll, we'll cap it at there, at that. Okay. You know, so for the bulk of uh, the world, I guess the most important thing is being, being able to put food on the table. You know, you got to be able to, you know, meet your, your basic necessities. And that being said, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be easy, David. It's yeah. not easy. Okay. And the only thing that businesses can do is, is what's in their control right now. And I've been saying this from the beginning, when this first started, you know, if the restaurant's doors have closed, well, Maybe you need to look at another way to do business. For instance, maybe you can do a cooking show online. I, I, yeah. have to... I agree because that's marketing. I yeah. found locally there was a, a, a restaurant and people were not going to the restaurant. So I read about the owner saying um, that he was going to actually start ordering bulk food because he already gets food supplies so he would sell it to the public it was like a grocery store oh wow so if i wanted to go get five pounds of chicken i could go to the restaurant whereas i couldn't get it from the local grocery store and, and that's one of the things so here's a couple of things that people could do that does not cost any money you could create a little mastermind group and, and that could be a group of uh, similar uh, people in similar industries and just talk like this is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Who, you know, if you have a restaurant and I'm talking about people that aren't in, in competition, forget about competition. The, it's not about competition. It's about, listen, uh, people need to eat. <laughs> and yeah. if you have a way to get food, then you have some kind of business model there. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with this. A friend of mine, good friend of mine, Larry Broughton, owns a chain of, of hotels and also manages hotels for some major, major companies. Uh, he's not doing well right now. Okay, people aren't staying at, at his hotels, but Larry is an award-winning Ernst & Young entrepreneur uh, and former Green Beret. Uh, so what's Larry doing? He's not sitting around waiting for people to come back to his hotels. He's, he's rebooting. He's gearing up his team to what's it going to look like after this? Mm -hmm. Because maybe nobody's going to be traveling the way they did before. He doesn't know. But what he does know is that he's got expertise that other businesses are going to need, okay? Disaster planning, you know, how to, how to not let this happen to you again. So he's, he's rebooting his whole business model, okay? He's not sitting around saying, oh, when is the next government check coming in? Yeah. That's not going to help anybody. Yeah. So you got to be proactive. You got to think outside the box. And, and if you have a why, You'll find a way. That's my story, and to stick with it. If you want to help people, you'll find a way. If you want to, you know, have, start a trucking company, you'll find a way. But first, you have to have the why. 
the, the more focused you are and determined you are on the why, everything else works it, itself out. So the foundation first. Um, absolutely. I agree 100%. Joe, if people want to hire you to help them with their accounting um, or just learn more about you, how can they reach out to you online? Thank you. Uh, they can go to bedrockbusinessbuilders.com. You can download my free How to Get Rich Guides. Okay. A lot of stuff that I've talked about here. It's not a secret. It's it's available to anybody for free. Or they can just book a, a free chat with me by going to timewithjoe.com. And I'll be glad to talk about anything about your business. It's my favorite subject. Okay. Well, Joe, I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being on Rebooting Business. Thank you so much. And uh, please stick around afterwards and maybe we can uh, chew the fat for another minute or two, okay? Awesome. And thank you. For those watching this video, thank you for watching. And for anybody listening out there, uh, thank you again. Please subscribe. Please hit the little like uh, doodad out there. And um, for any notes, please look at the liner notes and take care, everybody, and stay safe.